The following program contains shockingly brilliant insights. If you suffer from a lack of dark sunglasses, Randall may not be right for you. Check with your optometrist. Speaking the truth when others hold their tongues. Wrestling for justice with left wingers and crocodiles. Resisting the temptation to keep the peace at any price. Men enough to walk his cat, Randall Terry. Thank you. You're beautiful. I love you. Yeah. I'm begging for Kagan, all right. I'm begging for Kagan to be derailed, defeated, filibustered, otherwise thrown into the political dust heap of history. Oh, thank you. I love you and I always have. Let me tell you something right now about today's program. If you watch this show to the end, you are going to learn some things today that you will not get anywhere else and you'll be the person telling your friends, hey, this is what's really going on. Stick with me about precedent and stare decisis. I'm gonna make you a smarter person. In today's headlines, 10 Russian spies arrested. And Bill Clinton meets with Vladimir Putin to talk about the Russian spies. And Elena Kagan caught lying. She bursts into flames, the flames of hell. <gasps> I'm not making this up. We've got it on camera. You're gonna see her on fire, okay? Today's program brought to you in part by the KGB. We're still sending beautiful spies for some pillow talk after all these years. And by the FBI. We're still arresting those spies. Is this a great country or what? Before we go any further, we need a quick commentary from my good friend, Joey the Hammer. As you may know, there are 2.3 million prisoners behind bars. I was thinking the other day, my father, God rest his soul, if he had to choose between an elderly facility where he could go and a prison, what would he choose? Well, let's think about it. If they put the elderly in a prison, they're going to get exercise, maybe a nice pool, a workout room, maybe some art classes. They're going to have constant surveillance by video camera. If they fall down, God forbid, somebody will be there immediately to pick them up. If they need medication, it will be brought to them. Two times a week, their clothes, their laundry, their sheets, everything will be washed and delivered to them folded. Their medications will be monitored very carefully. All of that would happen here in this prison. On the other hand, if you took all the prisoners that were here, some of these scum, I tell you right now, you put them in a nursing home, what are they gonna get? Lights out, eight o'clock, lights on, five o'clock three ice-cold meals a day. You get stuck in a room and left there all alone for the whole day, and you get to pay $3,000 a month for this travesty. So you tell me what's wrong with this picture. Let me tell you something. If your mother or your father is getting old and needs care, don't stick them in some human warehouse. Bring them under your roof. Change their diapers. Hey. They changed yours when you were a miserable little squirt. It's time to pay him back. Oh, it is the order, you see. Take you to him, I will. Hi, friend, it's me, Randall. I I'm really not Yoda, I just do a really good Yoda voice. Listen to me, if you will stay with me through this show, I will teach you about precedent and about stare decisis and I will show you how Elena Kagan is lying through her teeth while she tells the truth. It's genius, kind of in a demonic way. But first, let's go to the news. Not one, not five, but 10 Russian spies arrested in America. Bill Clinton goes to see Vladimir Putin to talk about Russian harlots. Russian harlots, you've got to be kidding me. No, it's actually quite that salacious. <laughs> and due to the advent of modern technology, we've been able to install a fly on the wall where we actually can hear the conversation between Clinton and Vladimir Putin. 
It goes like this. Hey, Vladimir, listen to me. I'm not saying that I knew these girls in the biblical sense, but they were friends. I mean, we were just hanging out and stuff. You got to help me out here. Comrade Clinton, for you, for our two great countries, I help you out. Here, have a shot of vodka. Oh, you don't mind if I do. It's a long trip. Well, that's pretty good. You got another one of those? <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. Hillary's not here. How about one more? I mean, just for old times' sake. <laughs> Comrade Clinton, listen very closely to me. I not say one word to Hillary. All right, we work through these things together. No one get hurt. Everyone be happy. Yeah, uh, you better not say anything to Hillary, because the truth be known, I got a couple things you and I did together. We don't want Mrs. Putin to find out about. If you know what I'm talking about, Comrade Clinton. For you, for me, for Mrs. Clinton, for Mrs. Putin, everybody be happy if this very sorry affair get behind us very quickly and our two great countries go forward together into the future. It's good. It's good. It's very good. It's very good. I, just, I, could, I could even start to do the, here, let, let me do a, a Russian accent, right? I'm going to do the thing together. It's very good. Yes, it's very good. <laughs> and so it went. And what's going to happen is that these dear Russian spies are going to be quickly and quietly released. We'll work something out with the State Department and with the Russian Confederation. Everyone will be happy. And thus it goes. On to other news. We actually have seen the unthinkable. Elena Kagan bursts into flames. <gasps> Burst into flames! The very fires of hell? Yes, the very fires of hell. And she was led into hell by a Mormon. Of all things, a Mormon leads the way for Elena Kagan to trip herself and to burst into flames. Show him the footage, Andrew. Uh, uh, let me ask my questions the way I want to. Uh, I will. I'm, I'm going to be fair. I intend to be. And you know that after 34 <laughs> years. <laughs> go ahead, I keep going. Did you have something else you wanted to add? No, go ahead. Okay. We have to have a little back and forth every once in a while, or this place would be boring as hell, I'll tell you. <laughs> and, and it gets the spotlight off me, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm all I, for it. I go right ahead. That. And by the way, I've been informed that hell is not boring, so I <laughs> you can imagine what I mean by Just that. Just hot. Okay. Oof. That looked hot. I'm telling you right now, that woman is in trouble. In Orrin Hatch, you should be ashamed of yourself. All right, finally. Precedent. Starry decisis. What's it all about, Alfie? I am going to show you how that Elena Kagan is lying through her teeth. <laughs> lying through her teeth? I've never even heard a whistle. Yes, it's because she's that good. The beauty of stare decisis, of precedent, is that you can have your Allie McBeal bubble right around your head here. And in her mind, she's going, I'm quoting Justice Roberts. I believe in the precedent of there being no precedent. What? It sounds like circular reasoning to me. It's terrifying, I swear it is. In my hand, I have a copy of Lawrence v. Texas and Bowers versus Hardwick. Some of you know what these cases are about. What I'm going to show you in the next segment, please stay with me, is how Elena Kagan is sitting there when she answers questions about the precedent of Roe versus Wade or the precedent of Heller and McDonald, your first, or rather your second amendment right to keep and bear arms. I'm going to show you how she is lying and she knows she's lying. I'm going to show you how she's lying and how she is justifying herself saying, I'm not committing perjury. I'm not committing perjury because I'm quoting the chief justice of the Supreme Court. If I'm a liar, he is too. I'll be right back. There's room on the granite at Mount Rushmore for one more face. They're saving it for Randall Terry. Something about having to be dead first.
moments with Moses. You shall not see your brother's donkey or his ox fallen down by the way and withhold your help from them. You shall help him to lift them up again. Welcome back to the program. If you will stay with me through this segment, you will learn some things that you'll be able to talk to your friends about and help everyone around you understand the deception that is happening involving Elena Kagan and how she could justify it using Supreme Court precedent. All right, you've heard the phrase precedent thrown around. You've also heard the phrase stare decisis or starry decisis. That's a Latin phrase and it means, quote, let the decision stand. Let it stand. So if there is a decision, such as Roe versus Wade, or such as the Heller case that happened a year ago involving handguns in Washington, D.C., or the McDonald case that came down a couple of days ago regarding the law in Chicago that allowed the Chicago government to say to a, a law-abiding citizen, you can't own a handgun, that these decisions create a precedent and then you say well it's a precedent this is the way we do things starry decisis let the decision stand let it become the genesis let it become a part of the path of the rule of law so <clears throat> when she was grilled on the second amendment I'm gonna explain to you how she was lying when she was grilled on the second amendment she said I consider Heller and McDonald precedent. And both Grassley and, I don't remember which other, uh, which other senator asked her, do you believe, it might have been Colbert, said, do you believe it is a fundamental right for a person to own a firearm? And guess what she said? She wouldn't answer. She would not answer. All she said was, it's precedent, and I will treat Heller and McDonald with all of the respect due of all of the precedents that have come before. Now, please hear me, because this is going to get really twisted and convoluted. You have to understand the circular reason that she is using and that members of the court are using and that the enemies of truth and justice are using to justify their lies. You will remember that about a year ago, Sonia Sotomayor said, well, Heller's the law and we're gonna stand by it. And then, in the McDonald case, she said that she could nowhere see the right of an individual to keep and bear arms. She was lying to the Judiciary Committee while she told the truth. Here's how she justified her lie. Please listen to me. In the Lawrence versus Texas decision, in the Bowers versus Hardwick decision, here's what you had. Bowers versus Hardwick in 1986 said that consensual homosexual acts, okay, two men, two women doing unspeakable things, it said that these were not fundamental human rights. In fact, that they were not even protected rights. And then, about 17 years later, 18 years later, in Lawrence versus Texas, they said, that the court in Bowers had misapprehended the liberty claim. And they went on to say, hear my words, quote, stare decisis is not an inexorable command. I repeat, stare decisis is not an inexorable command. What does that mean? It means that you can throw it out if you need to. If you need to throw out precedent, say, no, forget stare decisis, go ahead. So 17 years earlier, the court decided that homosexual behavior was in fact a criminal act and that it was not defended by the US Constitution. And then less than a generation, less than a half a generation later, they said, oops, that's a stare decisis. We need to set it aside. We're not going to let that decision stand. We're going to pitch it out. When we come back from this break, I'm going to bring this full circle to the decision 
that the court issued very recently, which was hotly discussed today. I'm, of course, speaking about Citizens United, okay? The case that allows for corporations to spend big money on candidacies. I'm going to show you how Citizens United basically gave the death knell to stare decisis and to precedent and how Elena Kagan can be saying, oh, I'm going to honor precedent. I'm going to honor the precedent of Lawrence versus Texas that said the precedent can be thrown out. You see the circular reasoning? Lawrence versus Texas is precedent. And in Lawrence versus Texas, it says that stare decisis is not a command. In Lawrence versus Texas, the precedent is that precedent is really not precedent when we need to set it aside. In other words, I am the Supreme Court Justice. I am like unto God himself, and I will decide what is right and wrong and what is precedent that we keep and what is precedent that we throw away. I'll show you when we come back how stare decisis and precedent are being used to throw out stare decisis and precedent. Don't go away. I'll even donate my voice so that you don't cluck like a clucking moronic stupid pee head. I'll give you my backbone and my voice box if you just promise to use it. Courage is rightly esteemed the first of human qualities because it is the quality which guarantees all others. Sir Winston Churchill. Welcome back to the program, friend. I have in my hand a copy of Citizens United versus the FEC. This is the decision that Elena Kagan is using to justify lying to the Judiciary Committee. She's saying, I'll follow stare decisis. I'll follow precedent. Well, she knows that she's using the precedent of this case to ignore past precedents that she doesn't like. Let me, let me read to you some of these quotes, and you'll see for yourself the level of convoluted double talk that's going on with our court. And I quote, At the same time, stare decisis is neither an inexorable command nor a mechanical formula of adherence to the latest decision. If it were, segregation would be legal, minimum wage laws would be unconstitutional, and the government could wiretap ordinary criminal suspects without first obtaining warrants. As the dissent properly notes, none of us has viewed stare decisis in such absolute terms. Listen to this one. In conducting this balancing, we must keep in mind that stare decisis is not an end in itself. And then he says, its greatest purpose is to serve a constitutional ideal, the rule of law. It follows that the unusual circumstance when fidelity to any particular president does more to damage this constitutional ideal of the rule of law than to advance it, we must be more willing to depart from that precedent. What she can lean on is this case, Citizens United versus the FEC, which was decided less than a year ago, she can depend on this case to lie through her teeth and say, I'm going to give these cases all the precedent that they deserve. And what Justice Roberts said is, some cases don't deserve any respect when it comes to precedent because they're just bad law. That's why she would not say that she thinks that the, the right to keep and bear arms is a fundamental right given to us by God. Grassley pressed her and said, does the Constitution give us this right or does it come from God? And she wouldn't answer. She said, oh, I'm just going to use uh, McDonald and Heller as the precedent. And I'm going to use it like Judge Roberts used other precedents. I'm going to take it and I'm going to throw them out. That's the respect she has for precedent. That's how she can tell the truth and lie at the same time. I'll be right back. Let death come upon them. Let them go down to Sheol alive. Let them go away in terror 
into their graves. But I call upon God, and the Lord will save me. Amen. George Washington said, I walk on untrodden ground. There is scarcely any part of my conduct which may not hereafter be brought into precedent. Here we see the blessing and the danger of precedent. The issue is, what is just according to the laws of heaven?